Tis the Kingdom amazed developers and fans all around the world when it released, with many developers rushing to Twitter to speculate on how they achieved their physics-focused sandbox when Nintendo arrived in San Francisco this week to explain how they achieved their goals with new insights into their physics and their audio work. Well, today I'm going to round up all the best bits and the interesting points raised by Nintendo at GDC, and also how they achieved their technical marvel that is Zelda Tears the Kingdom. But if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below for even more Legend of Zelda content. Nintendo conducted a presentation at GDC this week called Tunes of the Kingdom, Evolving Physics and Sounds for the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. With senior director Takahiro Dota, sound programmer Yunya Osada, and physics programmer Takahiro Takayama, they all took to the stage to explain their work. Well, the developers explained that their philosophy behind both Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom was something called multiplicative gameplay. So this is a concept where action and objects come together to create an almost endless amount of possibilities. The seeds for the ideas were started in Breath of the Wild, and the team started work on the DLC which would go on to be Tears of the Kingdom. Well, the team wanted to expand their work on multiplicative gameplay, but allowing players to join multiple objects together well, this would eventually be realised in Link's Ultra Hand ability, but it was a massive undertaking for Nintendo to get there. Well, Takayama said, When I first saw the prototype, I was excited. This was going to be a great game, but this was going to be very, very difficult. I said to myself, are we really going to do this? Well, the development team had a couple of goals with Tears of the Kingdom. They wanted to create an entirely physics-driven world, and wanted to create a system where unique interactions happened without any dedicated implementation, essentially providing the building blocks to players and unlocking their creativity. When Nintendo described early prototypes where they'd throw a stone onto a cart and horse, they would instantly fly into the air. You know, early work on Ultra Hand was chaotic, with the developers often proclaiming things like, it broke, it went flying and others would reply saying, I know, we'll deal with it later. Now, one of the major challenges of creating an entirely physics-driven world was to remove all the non-physics items and turn everything into being physics-driven. One example was a simple gate, which was not a physics-driven object in Breath of the Wild. Nintendo had to go back and change all the non-physics items, which, to be honest, now explains the long development cycle and the testing phase. So even simple changes like changing how a gate functions led to unexpected effects for the development team. Now one of the great things about Tears of the Kingdom is how there's no real right way to solve a puzzle. For example, shrines can be solved in many ways, and solving shrines in multiple ways was a microcosm of the Tears of the Kingdom development, with developers finding all kinds of hidden solutions as they were developing and testing the game. Well, Ultra Hand was fairly buggy in their first implementation, and that's where Takahiro Takayama looked back at an element of Breath of the Wild for guidance. Takayama said, The clash between these non-physics-driven objects in Ultra Hand with its high degree of freedom caused daily problems all over the land of Hyrule. And we were in search for a solution, and the key to that solution was in our experience of developing Breath of the Wild. This is a cogwheel, it's not functioning properly due to it being a non-physics driven control. So we connected the two fixed cogwheels with a constraint to transfer velocity and move one of them with a motor. Because all of our calculations are now physics based, all of the issues we were facing were now resolved. Now from this experience we realised that removing non-physics driven objects and making everything physics driven would lead us to the solution that we were looking for. Well, the development team was laser focused on these physics driven based interactions as they wanted to create a world of items where players could create fun interactions. This included a system to make objects move, a system to make noises in a certain way, and a system to create unique interactions. This was particularly apparent in vehicles created in Tears of the Kingdom, when Nintendo created a system where wheels and a steering stick could be glued together using Ultra Hand. Creating vehicles brought the whole team together 
as complex items like wagons were designed with a physics-first approach. Now, artists and designers were then brought in to layer on the graphics and the textures, and it was all important that the whole team bought into the same vision to achieve what we see in the end product in Tears of the Kingdom. Nintendo also gave us some insight into the sound design for Tears of the Kingdom, which, to be honest, is just as complex as the physics system. Yunya Osada explained Hyrule contains voxel information to create a 3D environment, which are data points that store information all about the terrain. So, for example, if Link is inside or outside, then the audio can interact with the voxels, changing the audio if an object is behind a wall. Now, the audio design follows a similar pattern to the design philosophy for the rest of the game. Audio works without specific implementations, and abstract sounds can be combined to create new audio experiences. So, for example, there's no dedicated boat sound. The sounds are created by the objects moving through the water in the game, with the audio changing based on the size, the shape, the materials used to build the boat. And Asada said, it's making sounds that I have no memory of creating. You know, even the director told us this is basically a physics engine for sound. Well, Nintendo talking about their development of mainline Zelda series is always a highlight of the Game Developers Conference, and this talk was no different. So the development team talked about the expansion of Hyrule, using Skyward Sword for a guide for Tears of the Kingdom Sky Islands, and also using A Link to the Past Dark World as a guiding principle for the depths. Well, let me know down in the comments what you think about Nintendo's talk at GDC 2024. But that is it today for this short look at the Tears of the Kingdom developers at GDC 2024. And as always, thank you so much for watching or for listening. Don't forget, if you want to subscribe down below, you can hit that subscribe button for even more Zelda content. You can also hit that like button and also share the video too. That would really, really help us out here on Triforce Times. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you once again, and I will see you very soon.